Hey folks, you know, buying a brand new or used car can be a very exciting thing, but the process of buying it can suck. Wasted time at the dealership, finding a car you want only to find out you may not qualify for the financing. But don't worry because CarZing is here to help and they're sponsoring today's video. CarZing combines all the tools necessary into one powerful online car shopping experience. You can search millions of new and used cars and trucks, get pre-qualified with real rates and save time at the dealership. The best part is there's no impact on your credit score and you can personalize your financing terms all from the comfort of your own home. So go to carzing.com slash the smoking tire or hit the link in the video description to find out how you can save time, money and headaches with your new or used car purchase with CarZing. Now enjoy today's video. Hey folks, uh, welcome to the desert, uh, Jawbone Canyon to be specific. Because of the horrible fires they're having up north, all national forests in California have been shut down, which means we can't take the new Defender 90 on our standard issue off-roading trail. Right. Uh, the good news is I took the Defender 110 up that trail, and other than a shorter wheelbase, a little bit of different tuning, uh, extra and, doors, extra doors, and more weight, there's not a lot of difference between the two. So rather than repeating ourselves, and because the world won't let us repeat ourselves, we're on Jawbone today. And we're gonna drive up this beautiful trail. It's not quite as challenging uh, as the other trail, but it's a nice place to be in a cool car. So this is the Defender 90. Uh, it's called 90 because the old Defender two-door had a 90-inch wheelbase. Mm -hmm. uh, this one has a 102-inch wheelbase. And Defender 102. Doesn't roll off the top it doesn't, at all. It doesn't flop. No. Uh, the differences between the, the 90 and the 110, obviously two fewer doors, uh, and 17.1 inches are cut from the center section of the 110 to make this uh, 90. Some of that uh, leg room is from the back seats, mm -hmm. uh, and the back seats, and some of them are from, is from the trunk. Right. So the trunk is quite a bit smaller in this one. With the back seats up, yeah, it's, it's a bit tight. The but. back seats are pretty roomy, and the front seats are very roomy. Um, and in this model, you've got the, the jump seat, the center. This is a six-passenger vehicle. Look at this headrest. I know. Oh, it's I don't, so tall. I don't know why you'd buy the short wheelbase and then also get the six-passenger configuration. This is a, The center uh, jump seat is a $900 option, which I would skip. It doesn't make a great armrest, no, if I'm it, honest. It's okay, but it's purely to like evacuate a six-person in a Marvel <laughs> movie that Land Rover sponsors. Right, exactly. Uh, only 60% of the parts uh, with the 90 are shared with the 110. Everything in front of the B-pillar is the same, mm -hmm. and everything on the rear fascia is the same, and everything in between is different. Okay, uh, this one is the, the first first edition, so it has the three liter turbo and electric supercharged intercooled three liter inline six, making 395 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque, and because it's got that 48 volt uh, mild hybrid, it, it doesn't have a traditional starter motor, so you, you press the button, it's just on. It's kind of cool, actually, yeah. and it makes the stop-start system much more bearable right. to use. Because the AC stays on Correct. while you're off. And the power steering as well when you're when the engine's turned off. So uh, it's 4,800 pounds, uh, has an eight-speed uh, automatic gearbox with a two-speed transfer case uh, selectable on the button right here. Zero to 60, 5.9 seconds, quarter mile in 14 and a half seconds. That's quick. This thing would run with an E36 M3 on the drag strip. <laughs> Uh, top speed is 130 miles an hour. Uh, has the air suspension, height adjustable with a maximum 11 and a half inch clearance. Maximum wading depth is 33.4 inches, almost Whoa. three feet of water. Uh, it has the terrain response modes, which are selectable on the button. In fact, uh, it's very what cool in? what they do. They, they manage to find ways to make, make your scroll knobs multiple uses. So they're normally your temperature controls, uh, dual zone, but you can either press the fan and make that one your fan speed, or press this one, this button, and it makes it your temperature response. So right now, uh, you can well you can go from comfort and eco to snow, gravel, grass, uh, mud and ruts, and uh, sand, which we're in right now. So we've selected sand. 
You've also got hill descent control and all-terrain uh, all progress control, which is sort of like an off-road cruise off -road, control. Right. Yeah. The surround view cameras are standard, which we like for off-roading. 31 mm -hmm. degree breakover angle, uh, a 38 degree approach angle, wow. and the 40 degree departure angle. Wow. Um, so really good. Yeah, Those are very, very good. good. And of course, our air suspension is height adjustable, and we are selected on the off-road height. Let's drive up this Let's trail. Immediate comparisons will be with the Bronco, right, which we had very recently. Um, the one thing that uh, I that really really stands out to me, separating the Land Rover from the Bronco, is the quality of your uh, of the isolation in the cabin. The Bronco's loud. Yeah, even with the windows up and the top up in the Bronco, you feel like the doors are off. I mean, it's it's, it's pretty, better than a Wrangler. It's better than a Wrangler, but but it's pretty loud on the highway. Right. I mean, and I like the Bronco. I like what it can do. I like how it drives, but it is pretty noisy. And the modularity, right? The fact that you can take the doors and the right. roof off. That is fun. That contributes to road and wind noise on the highway. With this, if you're if you're honest with yourself and you're spending a lot of time on highway transits or commuting on the highway or whatever, this is a much more refined place to be. This is like, it's much closer to a Range Rover than to a Wrangler. Absolutely. In terms of refinement in the cabin. Yeah, I mean, this, this has a canvas top, but on the way up here, it was it felt as quiet as a car with a metal roof. Right. It, th this thing does a really good job of isolating the sound despite being made of cloth. I'm very the canvas impressed. rollback sunroof is cool. It's very cool. It's very it's cool. It's done very well. Yeah, and it's not it, it 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 you don't think about oh I'm in a vehicle that has a cloth top. Not at all. Uh, at all. Also, you know, full frame doors and stuff like that that you don't you don't get in the Bronco. Right. From a powertrain perspective, compared to the Bronco. I love this. I love driving under this pipeline. So cool. From a powertrain perspective, the power of output and delivery towards the Bronco is similar. This is just a little slicker. It's just it feels a little smoother because it's an inline. It, the start well, the stop. The 48 volt helps a little bit. It yeah. fills in that torque. It kind of helps it get off the line. Even though I've been very impressed with how the Bronco's powertrain gets rid of boost lag. I mean, yes. off-roading at slow speeds or high speeds. It's really good at minimizing that, but it's not going to be as good as something that has an additional power unit. Right, and around town in comfort mode, this can feel a little um, surgy. You know, you uh. can feel you feel it coming on because it keeps the revs down. Now we're up here in sand mode. It's it's staying in a gear that's a little lower, and it's keeping it above 2,000 RPM. So it's doing a better job of eliminating that sort of surgy feeling. Right. Uh, but if you're going down to idle, and then between idle and three, you notice it. Um, this trail is a lot sandier than the last time I was up here. When I was up here last, this was kind of like a fire road, and now there's a couple inches of soft sand on top of yeah, it. Yeah, with a couple of rocks protruding here and there. Yeah. How Great interesting. Great view, too. This the is view gorgeous. is good, yeah, and we're climbing cool. up fast. We're going up the cliff face here. It's very neat. I like vehicles that make off-roading pretty easy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not I'm not really into hill descent control or the cruise control thing, but like, I don't want to be exhausted at the end of the off-road trail. So, so I, you don't want it to be extremely stressful, right? I don't want it to saying? be stressful. No, I kind of want to be able to just drive up stuff. You know, what, what contributes to that? The electronics, or is it more about the sound deadening? And I think it's, with... yeah, I think it's more about the sound deadening, the comfort, this fairly light weight of the steering. Mm. Um, it's not the electronics so much, although you know that helps. But it's really more about having a very insulated cabin mm. and a really uh, refined ride. You know, this Land does Rover ride. does it so well. This ride's very good. It's much better on these kind of roads than the. Uh, the Bronco we had did not have the bill scenes. It didn't have the Sasquatch package. So it it was a little bit almost tightly sprung. Like yeah. It bounced around yeah. on the uh, the trail going into um, Rower Flats. Whereas this kind of glides a little bit more. It floats a little bit better. And the seat is far superior. This it's, is a much, much better seat. Much better seat. It feels yeah. higher quality. The fabrics feel uh, like they're higher quality. The foam is better. The shape is better. 
interestingly, ergonomically, I really like the seat and the seating position, and I feel like somebody my size fits really well in this car, but I wish the steering wheel came one inch further down and one inch further out. I feel like if you if you max out the seat, mm -hmm. then you can't get exactly the correct position on the steering wheel. I'm reaching just a little bit. Yeah, I agree with that. You are looking a little far away. Yeah. I really like the shorter wheelbase though. Both Bronco and even the Jeeps, like I think, you know, in the city and on the trail, um, just having that tighter turning radius, being able to park and maneuver really easily. Yeah. The short wheelbase stuff rules. Yeah, I mean I've I've taken four door Wranglers off roading before and they're very good at what they're very good at, but on a couple of switchbacks I've had to do three point turns. Yeah. Which sometimes is fine and sometimes it could be a little dicey. And the two the two door ones are just it's just easier to do almost everything except carry a bunch of stuff. And even the back seats in these, this and the Bronco, have a good amount of room. Yeah. Like they sacrifice on the trunk space. But I think that's smart because it's like, well if you're only if there's only two of you, you can put the seat down and you have all the cargo space you'd want. Yeah. If you're four people, you know, if you're gonna go camping, all right, get a get a rooftop thing and carry some extra stuff. It is kind of annoying to get to the back seat. The lean knees forward and slide them forward is a bit of a process. Right. It's uh, it's not a mechanical thing, so it's not quick. Yeah. It's electronic. But as we'll show you right now in the shot, you have to tilt it forward with this latch, and then you hit one button and it electronically moves it forward. But to go to put it back in place, it doesn't you, just it doesn't return. do it automatically. Yeah. You know, most cars when you lean it back, like in BMWs, you put that seat back into its position, it automatically uh, electronically returns to where it began. Yes. But this one, you have to hold the button which is also confusing. So to go forwards is one touch. To go backwards, you have to hold it. Yeah. It's I, probably I a safety feature so you don't crush someone's legs automatically. And it might have saved them on having some kind of sensor, you know, that would uh, keep that from happening. Maybe. But it's annoying. It's just, it's annoying. Uh, speaking of annoying, why don't you drive? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed with the passenger seat. Like, tons of tons of passengers. They've done a really good job of packaging this for people. And this shelf the is best, awesome. The best dashboard ever. Yeah, it's a very good dashboard. You get shelves all the way across, even behind the nav screen, and one on the side of the gauges, too. Yeah. It's got a grab handle built into it, which is really nice. Although Hannah, Hannah was disappointed that there wasn't a grab handle here uh, to climb in. in. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah. Bronco, they, that's why they put it here on the side. Oh, wait. It is a handle, it's right but it's, it's bad for getting in. Is it? Compared to up here. Okay. According to that's, my wife. Uh, well, that's valid. That's valid. That's very valid. Uh, as soon as I got in this car, I noticed something that you complained about when we first got this a week ago. What? These mirrors are way too small. Oh, yeah. I kept adjusting it going, <laughs> yeah, why can't I see more of the car? Yeah, and they're little. Back, like, why can't I see? They're so narrow that you have to choose, basically. I don't, I, there's not enough field of view at all. I suspect that just like Porsche, in Germany they use convex glass, which makes up for it. And in, not Germany, in Europe they use mm -hmm. a convex glass, whereas in America they can't use that glass because of some NHTSA regulation. And uh, and so you end up with a kind of sucky mirror. Yeah, and they made it, you know, they wanted to make the shape right. similar to the, the design language of the car, which is very vertical, right. but it doesn't really work that well to see behind you. It's a good-looking car, though, isn't it? It is a very good-looking car. Good -looking uh, car. This, this, the photos before it came out did not do it justice. I was not into it, and then when I saw them in person, I went, "Oh, I get it." And this one doesn't good. have the weird cargo box thing stuck on the rear window, which I think improves it. I noticed we have a little graphic in the center here. It actually shows the angle of the wheels as you turn the wheels. Oh, that's cool. Which is just kind of a neat trick. It I probably also shows your it. articulation if we were articulating, right? Probably, but when I was articulating, I was uh, paying attention to what was going on outside <laughs> instead of looking at the gate. This makes it pretty easy though, doesn't it? It yeah. does, it does. And, I, and part of that is that isolation. You just go, oh, it's very calm in here. It must be calm outside, even though you, know, you could be up on two wheels. It looks, when you just went over that obstacle, it looked very, very easy from the outside. Uh, yeah, and earlier this morning we were filming with TJ Russell and the crazy 911, and you needed to get back to the road, and you just kind of pointed to the road and just went up a thing, and we didn't know it was on the, on the other side. Yeah. It was fine. Very like, easy Like, we stuff. could probably go up that if we wanted to. Oh, yeah, we could. I just don't know where it goes at the other end. So you've spent a lot more time driving this around L.A. than I have. I haven't really spent any time in it at all. So what... 
What else do you not like about it? The only thing oh, about face. The only thing about it that I really that I really don't like is the the steering wheel position can't go where I really want it, mm -hmm. and that the touch screen is slow to respond. Very, yeah, very very slow. One thing that's terrible about this is the response of the touch screen, specifically as it pertains to satellite radio. So, for instance, if I want to <clears throat> change the channel, right? I have to choose. See how long that took? Did you see that? So now if I, let's say I want to go to the spectrum. So just think of the time, the thing about the time in between when I press this now and when the menu comes up. Like in an iPhone world, is that response time acceptable? Like or while no you're driving on the highway. Or while you're driving, like no it is not. Now, granted, if you have your favorites up, you can quickly, a little bit, a little bit quicker, go from one to the other without it changing screen. So you can search without it changing screen. But if you go to the player, change channel, so you change can't channel, go, you and can't, now you have to do that process again. You can't just go to the next channel. No. And there's no scroll knob. That's that is not good. That's poor. <laughs> that's poor. That's poor. And this is the new system. Like I complained about it in the old F pace, and my homie Jamal, who works at JLR, was like, "Don't worry, the new system's coming with the Defender. This is the new system. It's the only place where the Bronco handily beats Defender, except for inability to remove doors. But like the Ford touchscreen system is pretty good. This one." still behind that's those two things to me are are pretty frustrating and and affect the usability of the car although maybe they would affect it for other people less than they affect it for me especially the steering wheel position that's a that's what some would say is a me problem uh i think straight, I think straight. MK yeah uh, mk24 yeah, MK yeah um Top of the this hill. is a fun trail it gets you out of jawbone canyon and over a mountain yeah, it is. I like trails that go places. And if you want to get creative and see something a little more extreme, you can, and then yeah. you can come back to this. MK24 really cool. is good. Is it 224? Uh, 224. 224. Yeah. Um, All right, so we should we talk about pricing? Right. So this thing is $65,000. Being the first edition, it doesn't have any additional options, right? Just the first edition-ness comes with a bunch of stuff. It basically has all the options built into that package. Right. Yeah. It has the, the, the multi-material uh, seats. They're part cloth and part part leather it's got the bigger engine the air suspension and and the the, the the important stuff honestly yes except it doesn't have radar cruise control except right. it has like blind spot all this and it has cameras and all these things and has everything in first edition but it does not have radar cruise control that's an excellent point for sixty five thousand dollars in a land rover product i would like radar cruise control and if you can get it as a standalone option i would probably spend the money on that spec for spec uh, granted, of course, you can't take the doors and roof off this. Spec for spec, this thing is about six or seven thousand dollars more than the equivalent Bronco. Right. In my opinion, that's money well spent. It's it just if you're going to spend time on the highway, the difference is really noticeable. Yeah, and we should say that the Bronco we had was the uh, Outer Banks, which right? Is like the luxury Bronco. So that's what we're saying, spec for spec. Obviously, there's Broncos you can get with Sasquatch and all the other things that are priced like this, yeah. but they are more oriented towards off-roading. Right. You can't get a more refined Bronco than what yes. we had. And whereas this is, you know, similar, similarly equipped, uh, although with, an, uh, with the air suspension, um, you it's know, a it's just like, it's, it's a nicer yeah. place to be. Straight yeah. up, it's a nicer place to be. Yeah. Um, the Bronco, I love taking the doors off. I thought it was great on the trail. Not so good on the fire roads without those shocks. This is a little more versatile. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the air suspension can do all the things. You don't just have to pick one. Right. Um, and, I mean, reliability, we don't know. Who, know, we, who knows what's going to happen in this thing in five years? Correct. We, we, we don't. have to judge it because it's a new car. It is a complex engine. Yeah. But we don't know. But the complexity makes it more refined. Like, I hated the stop start in the Bronco. Uh, I, I, I deactivated it, it, it off, every yeah. time. Whereas yeah. this, I leave it on. 
I don't turn it off because it doesn't cut the AC compressor. It doesn't cut the steering pump. It doesn't have a starter motor that crank. And go, it's almost like it turns the the engine off, but it doesn't turn the car off. Right. Whereas the other ones, it kind of just disables the car. Start stop in a hot climate where it disables the AC compressor sucks. It just yeah. does. Yeah. It just does. Just turn it off. So I I really like this product. I mean, it's not perfect, it's cool. yeah. but I really like it. I prefer the two door to the four door. I think the the two door is where it's at. Um, I think you don't need to go crazy with the accessories. You know, this is pretty well equipped. I love the canvas roof. Yeah, and very impressive. Yeah, and it's been really fun to drive on the road. It's nice in the city. It's reasonably efficient. I get around 17 miles a gallon in the city. And I like these windows in the roof. The uh, yeah. the other ones when I was sitting the back windows. there, it did make it feel like a more airy kind of open environment. And yeah. this thing has a monster fuel tank, so you can. It has a legitimate 400 plus mile range. Uh, cruising, which for a short wheelbase SUV is pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, thanks yeah. to Land Rover for letting us have a go uh, for a week. Really enjoyed it and for accommodating us when we had to change our off-road plans when the forest was closed. Mm -hmm. Thanks to you guys for watching, and we'll see you later. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.